High School. This is Miss Ray, the A Train. Choo choo. And we're doing bonding, chemical bonding. And this is 3.2. This is the VSEPR theory. This is the Vesper theory. And what VSEPR stands for is Valence Shell Electron Pair Repulsion Theory. It's a mouthful. It's the valence shell electrons. They come together, they pair up. And what do electrons do with electrons? They repel each other. Uh, we can just call this our geometry or molecular geometry. So let's get to it. Um, every time we take a look at our geometry, we want to do the Lewis dot structure, just like in the last podcast. And we want to determine how many bonding sites we have. Now, if we only have one or two bonding sites, that is a linear shape. Okay, and linear is a bond angle of 180 degrees, and it has a hybridization of sp. Okay, what sp stands for is it's bonding one in the s orbital and one in the p orbital, which means one or two bonding sites. Okay, let me show you two of these molecules. One is uh, HCl. HCl has to be linear because we only have two points. The shortest distance between two points, straight line. And so HCl just has one bonding site, and so it's linear. And carbon dioxide, we, we took a look at the Lewis dot structure of this in our past podcast. Carbon has two bonding sites. Now, guys, those double bonds, each double bond is one bonding site. And so carbon has two bonding sites around it, which makes it linear. There's no unshared pairs on it, and that's sp hybridized. Okay, let's take a look at our when we have three bonding sites. Three bonding sites would be sp2 or sp squared hybridized. One bonding in the s orbital, two bonding in the p orbital, which adds up to three. And that is a trigonal planar shape, 120 degrees. Okay, the most famous trigonal planar, and really the only one that we really see for trigonal planar, is boron trifluoride (BF3). Because boron only has three valence electrons, so it can only bond with three things. And you can see, it is going to be equally spaced apart at 120 degrees, and it'll be basically a triangle on a plane. Okay. Now when we get the four bonding sites, we call that sp3 hybridized. One bonding in the s orbital, three in the p orbital. That adds up to four. And that is gives you a tetrahedral shape. Now tetrahedral has a bond angle of 109.5 degrees. And that has zero unshared pairs. And you have to know that shape. Okay. Now once we lose uh, a, a bond and we end up having an unshared pair on it, it becomes trigonal pyramidal. It's a triangle pyramid, okay? And take a look. It still has four bonding sites. It still has sp3 hybridized, but it has one unshared pair. And look at what happened to the bond angle. The bond angle went down. And the reason the bond angle decreased was the unshared pairs on the central atom repelled more. And so when it repels more, that bond angle gets, gets crunched, and it's a little bit less. Now, look at, um, we also have, when we have two unshared pairs, and we call that bent. And look what happened to the bond angle. The bond angle went down again. It went down to 105 degrees. Now, guys, 109.5, 107, 105, these are three bond angles you need to know. You need to know these bond angles. These three are very, very important, so make sure you, you get them down, know them for tetrahedral, trigonal pyramidal, and bent. I do want to show you these three molecules. Um, the first one I want to show you is methane, CH4, and that is a tetrahedral shape. You can see there's no unshared pairs, four bonding sites, and it's equally spaced apart, 109.5 degrees. Okay. Here is our trigonal pyramidal. That's like ammonia, NH3. And look at what ammonia has on them. The nitrogen has an unshared pair, one unshared pair. It still has four bonding sites four bonding sites, but so it's the exact same hybridization, it's still sp3, but it's a different shape because, and a different bond angle, because of that unshared pair, and that creates what we call a triangle pyramid, 107 degrees. And a bent molecule is something like water. Look at the oxygen on water. Oxygen still has four bonding sites. It's not linear. It won't be linear because it's got four bonding sites, it's got two unshared pairs, and so it bends it, it makes it bent and down to 105 degrees. And guys, the bond angle decreases because the number of unshared pairs increases because there's more repulsion, okay? That's four bonding sites. Let's take a look at five bonding sites. Five bonding sites would be DSP3 hybridized. Bonds in the D orbital now. DSP3 hybridized, okay? And so that is the trigonal bipyramidal, okay? That is zero unshared pairs. Now, that's two triangle pyramids, basically. 
Okay. Now, when we have one unshared pair, we call that seesaw. And when we have two unshared pairs, we call that T-shaped. Now, guys, seesaw and T-shaped are two shapes that you need to know, and you got to be able to fill out just, just like when just like knowing the bond angles of 109.5, 107, and 105 for the tr tetrahedral, trigonal, pyramidal, and the bent. You got to know seesaw and T-shaped. I do want to show you these go though. This is the trigonal bipyramidal, something like PF5. You can see there's zero unshared pairs, and it looks like two triangle pyramids if you put up some sides on that guy. Seesaw would be something like SF4, sulfur tetrafluoride. Okay, there's one unshared pair, and it makes it into this kind of weird shape of it looks like a seesaw. Right, seesaw. Okay, T shaped would have two unshared pairs. That would be like CLF3. And uh, it looks like a T, T-shaped, okay? And that has two unshared pairs, all right? So again, you have to take a look at the seesaw and T-shaped, make sure you can identify these. And guys, look on your periodic chart at what happens with the PF5, SF4, CLF3. Take a look at what happens on your periodic chart. It gives a little bit of a trend there. We also have when we have six bonding sites, and we call that D2SP3. Sometimes you'll see it as SP3D squared. It, it doesn't matter which way you write it, whether it's SP3D2 or D2SP3, it doesn't matter. Okay? And if there's zero unshared pairs, we call that an octahedral. If there's one unshared pair, we call that a square pyramid. If there's two unshared pairs, we call it a square planar. Now, the, the way I like to know square pyramid and square planar is, look at what's on that D. It's D squared. Okay? So when we have D squared, six bonding sites, we're going to mate a lot of times have square pyramid or square planar. I do want to show you these. Um, octahedral looks like this, SF6. No unshared pairs. Sulfur is has more than an octet, and he is bonded to six things. Square pyramid, look at it. It's BRF5, okay? And it looks like a square. See the square on the bottom there? And it makes a pyramidal type shape. That's one unshared pair. And we also have square planar. This looks like a square. Okay, if you connected these dots, there are these fluorines on the outside, it looks like a big square on one single plane, and that is XEF4, XEF4. And that's all of our shapes, guys. You've got to know those shapes. You have to know the bond angles, and you have to know seesaw, T-shaped. You've got to know square planar and square pyramidal. You've got to know each one of those four there, okay? Here are some common resonance structures that you have to know, and uh, they show up a lot. The first one is nitrogen dioxide. We did the Lewis dot structure of this on the last podcast, and that, that is a common, common, common resonance structure. The color of nitrogen dioxide is a brown, deadly gas, a brown, deadly gas. But a lot of times, it is in a solution as N2O4, dinitrogen tetraoxide, because it does what's called dimer, dimerizes, dimerization. The two nitrogens, see those two lone pair, the lone electrons on the nitrogen? They share, and it goes from NO2 as a gas to N2O4 as a solution, okay, in a solution. Uh, another common resonance structure is sulfur dioxide, SO2, okay, and another common one is benzene, C6H6. This is a great solvent for nonpolar things, benzene, benzene, very nonpolar there. And we also have ozone. Ozone, we, uh, we see that um, a lot of times on AP exams is being able to draw ozone's resonance structures. Guys, that's all of our uh, molecular geometries, resonance structures, and that's all of our third unit, which is chemical bonding. Hope this helped. I'll catch you in class. Bye.